let's go ahead and get started. I'm uh, very pleased to welcome uh, Jeff Moore to Boss Method today. How are you, Jeff? Good, man. How are you? Appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Yeah. Glad, glad to have you. Excited to dive in. But before we get into more of the details of, of automation and whatnot, why don't you give us a little bit of your background? Sure. Yeah, no worries. So I'm, I'm born and raised in Colorado. Um, I've been in real estate now for just about 11 years. Um, I started uh, as a flipper, kind of throwing the hammer, uh, learned about acquiring properties, and then realized that getting into retail and selling the house was going to make a little bit more money and less time than flipping, right? So um, jumped into that and then started my team about five, six years ago. I was with a different brokerage, moved over here in about two years ago, and it's kind of, uh, you know, uh, skyrocketed from there. Uh, I coach with uh, Club Wealth. Um, and I've got a background in like coaching soccer at a super high level. I have an A license in the U.S. Federation. Um, that's kind of helped me into like laying out some of this groundwork. And some of that, I call it the light bulb moment. The light bulb moment for me was four years ago when I figured out who my client was, right? And my client was the real estate agent. And so now what you see on my team and everything that we do is all geared around helping real estate agents on our team succeed, not mom tethered to their success, right? So um, that's, that's kind of a little bit about my background in real estate specifically. And I absolutely love what I do as a team leader and uh, helping create systems and automations for the team so that they can thrive in. It's awesome. Awesome. That's great. So let's dig a little bit deeper into that. So at what point you just said like, like chronologically kind of when you started to become a team, but like, I think a lot of people always kind of wonder about that leap. Like what, what were indicators that there was more to this than just you? Yeah. And it's, it's funny because I, um, I just kept experimenting with stuff. Right. And so I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in an education, basically making mistakes. And I figured out, you know, through that trial and error that um, I need, you know, I didn't want to be, an agent for the rest of my life. I wanted to go see my kids play soccer on the weekends. I wanted to be available at nights, right? And so, okay, I need to create something that's got sustainability that can last even if I'm not there, right? And through the coaching that I've received, I put pieces in place to do that, right? So that light bulb moment for me is like what I call the start of the hockey stick effect, right? You're going to have a little bit of growth and then boom, right? And so that light bulb moment is three to four years ago. Um, and I realized that I need to, to succeed through other people. And so that's when I hired more purposely agents, right? Because I needed to find people that I'm not. I'm a high D, high C in the disc assessment. And I'm not a high I, right? High I is like adaptive. Like this kind of stuff is very adaptive for me, right? I got I to, gotta, you know, modify who I am for this kind of stuff. But it, uh, so I have to go find high eyes that love being, you know, in social, ex you know, places and love being parties and all that. So as soon as I figured that out, then it helped me to put pieces around me that's going to help the overall organization, right? Um, so, and then I also had to learn how to check my ego because when it's about the bigger picture and it's about the team, then I work for them. I work for that company. And uh, I, my role on that team is to serve, you know, our clients, basically, right. right? Yeah, absolutely. No, I think that's great. You covered a lot in that. And, and, and I, I want to make sure we get to our topic. I'd love yeah. to unpack all that. But I will ask you, what is, what was the first, I think you just answered it, but maybe a little more detail around the first hire, or the first person, the first agent, like what was the first, when was it more than just you and who was that person? So it was an admin. It was definitely an admin who could leverage me on the, the compliance, the paperwork, the, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, I didn't really enjoy showing. So I hired a, had a showing partner agent more or less. Um, and then I had ISAs, right? So I had a lot of people generating appointments. Um, what I found was I was going on all these appointments and I was crushing it, right? But I had no life. So I traded one career where I had no life to another career that just had no life, but maybe more money, right? So I needed to figure out some way to uh, automate that or to leverage myself. And I did it through agents and through technology, right? I looked at tech to solve a lot of problems and then whatever can't be solved with tech, human beings are 
are the best way, right? That's awesome. No, I, it's funny. I say that a lot. Like it's, it's both, you know, people ask me a lot like, oh, well, what do you use for that? And I say a person, you know, yep. sometimes it's just a person. It's, I wish I could give you a magical that like, there's a zap that goes to this and then API that, and then they all, but sometimes yep. just a human paying attention. So yeah. that really makes sense. Where, um, at what point did you start kind of down the automation, like the, yeah. the technology path, in, especially in relation to the people? Like what was that kind of ebb and flow? So it was, it was around ISAs when they were generating um, so many appointments that I had to figure out a way for them to get appointments onto my calendar that weren't conflicting without me being available to say, here's my schedule, right? So I figured out a form that could just go to the calendar. Right. So that was literally the very first automation that I had was, you know, a couple ISAs scheduling appointments while being on the phone with a expired lead. And then all of a sudden it popped into my calendar. Right. And then it kind of just kept going from there where I'm like, wow, there is a world here that is, you know, just, we're just, we're just tapping into. I've learned about AI. I've learned about, you know, new technologies through, you know, through Apple, through iPhones and Google you know, but that, that first automation is really what, what did it for me and go, man, we could scale because when we can, when we figure out those automations, you could scale. Right. And as a business right. person, you got to find those little tweaks that get you to scale. Right. And then you can, it's funny, it's a real big chicken or egg thing. It will definitely go deeper on this, but like, you know, the idea is it, then you can train to that. Right. So if you figure it out, you can train to that. I think a lot of people get the people and then have to backpedal and figure out the yep. stuff to train the people or they're always changing what they're training. Yep. So yeah, it, it's always a balance. Yeah. It, well, it's this balance between, okay, I, I thought of myself for a long time as a fundraiser for my own organization, right? So I would just be in hustle mode for six months, eight months, go fundraise a hundred grand in the bank account. And then I would say, okay, now I'm going to go focus on, on failing basically in systems and laying down railroad tracks, right? So far that next time I went back, it worked, right? And I did that cycle a couple of times before really like two or three years ago when it actually kept going. And I'm like, okay, the railroad track and the railroad are now moving along at the same you know, clip. Right. Um, but that's, yeah. that's that balance of back and forth that most team leaders and agents experience. Yeah. And the chicken or the egg, 100%. I mean, it's funny, I, I wish people talked more about this because the reality of it is, is you, you're not, I mean, unless you're just a IT guy, then you're not gonna figure all that out at the same time in the right order, in the right way. You just have to do some of it, but then yeah. there's the balance of, of training your team on it. And I, I know a lot of people who, you know, they're like, oh, we got this new thing. Oh, we got this new thing. And then they sort of train on it, and but they know it's gonna change again in a couple of months, so they don't, they don't really listen. So how do you kind of manage? And again, question. we'll go deeper on this later, but just in general, how do you manage? So I think you've got to have the understanding that it's not going to be perfect. And it, correct me if I'm wrong, I got to be in business for the next decade, 20 years, right? So it's okay if I make a mistake today because I'm going to learn from that mistake for later. So I think coming to terms with failure, that is okay. We say that it's very cliche, but being actually okay with saying, I'm going to pony up $10,000 in something and it's probably not going to work, but I'm going to be learning so much that I'm going to use that for the next set, right? And so I think you got to educate the people around you, yourself, agents, and go, look, if it's perfect, then I've actually gotten complacent, right? I, I, it's, I actually need help in figuring out what's, what's going to work and how to move forward. Right. So instead of us th thinking it's going to be perfect and it's all shiny, just be honest and upfront with where you're at and let the people around you just give you critique and give you feedback all day long. And that's going to help you. It's going to get you there faster. Right. But if we're pretending like it doesn't exist or we're just afraid of that failure and we are going to tiptoe around it, you're you're just going to ask for it longer. Right. And that's where, and that creates a culture around that where it makes sense and people get it and they know that you're open to feedback or this didn't work or that did work or we're trying this thing, but we're not going all in with it. You know, like yeah. just a piece, yeah. of the, piece of the puzzle, you know? Yeah. Think about how companies roll out stuff, right? Is you, they have R and D, you know, divisions 
where a lot of people don't even know what R&D does. They test it over here, they do a semi rollout, and then they do a full rollout, right? And so I think you have to think of it in those kinds of ways. Right. You know, yeah, I help. think that's funny. That's something I preach a lot is like, I don't know why we don't look to other industries that actually have departments and do even commercial real estate. They have like departments and yep. there's a thing and people go into the office from, it's not quite yeah. nine to five, but you know, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, more those success leaves clues, man. I mean, that, that tech stuff, we're ahead in a lot of ways, you know, in, in what we do as far as with AI and with, te with tech. But man, as far as the business organizational and structure and foundational stuff, we play more trial and error and more yeah. failure than almost any other industry yeah. I see. It's the wild west. One, yeah. one thing that strikes me in talking to you and, you know, full disclosure, we, you and I had not met or, or connected prior to this. Um, yeah. Something that strikes me right off the bat is you're very, you're a very begin with the end in mind person. Like it's, you've yeah. said several things. Um, but, you know, I think what's interesting about that too, speaking of kind of the blend is the blend of strategy and tactics. Cause some people come in with the strategy and they're big thinkers and they come with the end in mind, but don't know how to get there. Yep. Some people just do a bunch of stuff without a full strategy. So how do you really balance strategy and tactics? Well, I, you've got to, I think you have to sit down, take a deep breath and really think about what, what is this all for, right? Searching for a why basically, right? And not letting anything interfere with that thought process while you have it. Because if you're letting distractions and alerts interfere with that, that clarity, then you're just going to run haphazardly and it's going to be random, right? And so I talk, I, what I call in, in kind of coaching is, we run in these like sections like, okay, today I'm a showing agent tomorrow. I'm a closing agent today. This time I'm a lead generator and I'm a systems guy. And you've got to connect all those to run a, a run a business, but it starts with like, okay, paint the life that you want to live in five years. And that's not like a, 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 you know, money question. That's not necessarily a units question. That's just paint the lifestyle that you want to avoid. People rather move away from pain. So what do you want to avoid? I want, I work, I have a mantra that says work 80 hours now to work, to work, to not work 40 hours later. Right. With the ideas like, okay, I want a lifestyle. So what is a number that you need to get? So I think you need to get clear on that why and what that number is, and then go back to saying, okay, does, is what I'm doing right now fit into that future lifestyle does it scale to that number and right. it doesn't matter what that number is like for me i took it down to units because i know if i get the units that we want everything else will take care of itself everything i won't need to worry about the money i don't need to worry about anything else i'm just worried about the units right so i think if you get clear on that then you can go okay does it fit there you know it's i, I use the analogy of the architect and the engineer right? Like NASA, when they go and build a spacecraft, they're not just building it from like Legos and like nothing there. They, they sketch out a drawing, right? The very first, you know, people that have drawings, probably. <laughs> yeah, but they have some sort of rendering of what they want. And then they're back and they're jumping back and forth between build mode and seeing, does it fit? Oh, this isn't going to work. I got to change this piece out, right? And we get into this world as agents because that's what we signed up for is like working and getting in the weeds. We need to have like the instruction manual or just the front of it to see, does this look right? Is this right where I want it to be? And if you had that image, right, then would you be happy with where you're at? Yeah. You know? And yeah, that's typically I think I, I do find that, that sales, strong salespeople are good at kind of the visualization of that helps. It's not just saying like, oh, you have a team, oh, you have whatever. It's like, oh yeah, you only list or you're totally out of production or like, what does it feel like yeah. when you do that? So yeah, yeah exactly. That's, that's yeah, great. and then once you get that instruction there, you'll actually discover like what you want, what you're good at and what you like best, right? And you've earned the right, once you've done that, you have earned the right to create the role that you want in your own organization, right? But until then, you've got to learn to be an agent. You can't, like I always say in military terms, you know, even the generals, you know, four-star generals went through boot camp. All of them. Right. They all went through boot camp. Nobody avoids that. Nobody avoids that. If, you, yeah. if you're trying to avoid that, sorry, this is not going to work. Right. 
Yeah, that's a great analogy. I totally dig that. Why don't, uh, so I'm going to run just one quick poll real quick to see who we've got on, if people are solo agents or team members or whatnot. So I'm going to hit that right now. While we're doing that, because I think people can click A button and still listen, why don't you tell us a little bit about your, um, your tech stack, just in general, like what are the primary tools that, that you use? And then we'll dig into how you use them. Yeah, so I like, I like simple systems that don't, you know, break the bank, right? Is, and I take it down to the agent level. I think it's important to start with um, the experience that the, your client has, like your cons the consumer, what experience do you want them to have? And what experience do you want your agent to have? right, is I didn't want my agent to have to log into multiple systems. I didn't want them to have to remember to make sure they did this or did this or did this. I, I want them focusing on people and, and doing a good job and, and their conversions, et cetera. So I, I try to keep their experience down to like a couple of things, right? Um, so with that in mind, this is why I love follow-up bosses because it will, um, with a stage change or with a tag ad, I can trigger so many different things off of that, right? And so I use Zapier a lot for those kinds of triggers, you know, and I, I could simply add a tag and then all of a sudden it could get a CMA, it could go into HomeBot and it can go, you know, as a mailer, right? right. And right. now the agent doesn't even have to think about it. They could just focus on tag, move on. They can multiple tags, right? right. They're leveraged just by one single technology. So yeah, we're using Zapier, um, we're using uh, like cloud CMA, we're using HomeBot, um, we're using like street text is a good lead source. Y Lopo, like I use Y Lopo as like the engine. They're not the fuel, right? The fuel is the lead source, but Y Lopo is more the engine. Um, and then like follow boss is like the hub, right? That's the central operational hub. And then Slack is our communication hub. Right. And those are the two main, like main hubs that we're going to use in our organization. Um, Sizu for tracking. Yeah. It's, it's funny. That. We've got majority of team members on today, which is awesome. They're going to love you. They're going to be like, wait, you don't have to do all that. Stuff. Like all that. We just do this and then this happens. So let's talk about some, um, what are some basic, like some real, like, let's just say nobody's ever automated anything in their business at all. Like what yeah. would be the first thing you think, I don't know if it's easiest, most impactful, but what would you say the first thing is to do? You know, I think it's a, um, you know, it's a really good question. I, I think it's what is important to you on the client experience. So if, uh, if you want to make sure you don't forget to follow up with somebody, right, can you simply set up a quick automation based on stage, right? And this is why smart lists are, are a great thing, because if you just, change the stage from, from C to A, you're automatically going to just follow up with that person more, right? Um, so there's a quick one that's simple, you don't have to overthink it. Um, you could set up a mailer, right? So there's a, if you love to send handwritten notes, you know, I used to have like five a day, that was the number, right? Five a day, boom, 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 20 a week. And uh, now with like thanks IO, you can write a handwritten note Right. And so if you want to standardize that and make it as personalized as you can, you, you could do that, tag it, thanks, you know, send thanks and boom, send a zap right over to thanks IO. Right. And I can show you like quickly, even now there's opening up Zapier and just showing you how to do that. It would just, it'd be pretty quick. But, I think, you know, yeah, I think that's, I think that's fine. I, I think we got to find the right blend of tactical and strategic, but I think showing that yeah, um, as an yeah, example very, is great. Yeah, that's very technical, right? But it's it's just if this, then this. Well, here's here's the thing. You ju you just totally nailed it. You said you do it, and then you look for a way to automate it, simplify it, make it at scale, yeah. whatever that is. So the key is execute, and then you find the shortcuts as you do it. I think some people try to set up the automation first before that's they have right. the process. Yeah, I see that too, right? And I call that the what or the how. And, and you're just looking for, that sounds cool, let's do it too, right? And now it's gonna be clunky because you're trying to figure out doing it for like their, their way. What do you naturally do or what do you want your client experience to be? Document that or just be in that thought process, then go, okay, now I have a, almost a flow chart and here's how I can automate this one, I can automate this one. And the how 
becomes so much easier to solve yeah. once you've got the what. Yeah. Right. That's so, great. Yeah. If you don't mind sharing that, that's great. We'll flip to your screen. Sure. Yep. Okay. So like, here's my, here's a Zapier account, right? And all you do is create a zap. I mean, literally it's pretty, pretty straightforward and follow up boss is the trigger. And you would just trigger off of a tag. Okay. So let's say you want to add the tag. Um, I mean, really, you know, mailer doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You can add any tag system you want. And let's say the tag is, um, you know, send mailer, right? So obviously this would need to be on the lead itself, right? But then your once it pulls that person, hold on, I'm not sure why it's not working. I'm gonna just use an example. I don't know why it's not pulling up, but then your, your action. Okay. This is where you have tons of apps in here, right? So just from any tag, right? You can use, I mean, you name it, right? But then you could say, thanks IO. Yep. Right. And now, oh, okay. Send a postcard. Right. And that send postcard is going to let you send whatever you want. Now you got the first name, you got their last name right? You've got their address, right? You can parser this over from follow-up boss. Yep. Right. So it's basically doing the work for you of all that manual stuff. And now um, it's just going to send out that mailer, like, like pretty straightforward. You got to yeah. go. I think it's going to be important for you to know these apps, but this is kind of how I pick my technology is based on apps that are going to work well with others. Yeah. No, that right? totally makes sense. I've always said that about follow up boss itself as a, yeah. I like it because it, it's not trying to be all the things it just try it integrates with all the, all the best of the other things. Yeah. Right. And, and then now, I mean, once you've got that system set up, you can go to a smart list, right? You can create a smart yep. list, select all, add right. tag. Right. And now you just sent out 13 mailers in yep. 10 yep. seconds. You know, it's funny. I do the exact same thing for with tags for our our company email list. I yeah. add a tag to it. It technically it's just the Mailchimp integration. It doesn't flow through Zapier, but same yeah. difference. Apply a tag, something happens. That's right. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and I love and so that. I, I see a lot of people that that have I have a zap to, the, and that's fine if if that's your thing and you want to have a zap to this, to that, to the other thing, to change this and all that. That's great but you should probably start with this, not a, not a nine stage zap. Yeah, exactly. What, what do you already do? Start there. Yeah. That's that great. you like, and that's effective and see if you can remove it with just like a tag or a stage or, you know, like for us, when we change the stage of a lead to like active or coming soon, uh, you know, coming soon seller kicks it out to my admin and it starts her process. Yeah. That's right. great. I, I love that. So while, while we're in this conceptually, you don't have to keep sharing if you don't want, but while we're in this conceptually, just to kind of leap from like super simple to like crazy tech stack, like what are some of your, they don't have to be complicated, but what are some of your favorite uh, automations that you're using? So, I mean, you could see these are my, the, the Zapier is the, is the key piece, right? Now you have all the other ones as well, like Amazon Web Services and some things that get more and more complex. But um, I, I just love that. This is the, the kind of the gateway into that. But I bring all leads basically into Zapier so that I'm in control of tags, right? I can right. control the source, right? I can control like any other products that I have lap lapped into it. So a new contact hits follow up boss. That's basically saying anybody that hits your account, follow this zap. And I filter out, you know, some like recruiting or some other things yeah. I don't necessarily want, you know, and then I've got standard leads. Okay. Here's what I want to happen with all my, um, you know, Facebook leads. Nice. Right. And, and so I, I think it's, my tag system is also something important to note is, um, is uh, I use leads as, as like that, that model. So I have leads standard and then I have leads premium and then I have leads team handout. 
team handout buyer, team handout seller. And so whenever I pick up a new lead source, which one of these is it going to fill into? Right. right? right. Is it going to fill into the premium one or the standard one? And the Here's standard one in general, is it the automation doing that if certain yeah. criteria are met? Yep. So okay. this is that, you know, lead standard is added as a tag in Zapier. Right. Right. If, if it's a certain source. source. Yeah. Right. Oh, if perfect. the source is right. all the ones that fit my standard thing. Yeah. Right. And so now I can, I can use that as my, um, as like my label more or less. Right. So right. the million dollar question is what do your agents have to do? This, this le new lead comes in from Facebook or whatnot. Do they yeah. even know about it? Are yeah. So, well, so things have changed on our team a little bit with the introduction of an ISA. Um, so we send it to a pond and uh, we send it to what we call the lead bank and yeah. the lead bank, anybody can hit on our team. Absolutely. Anybody, including our ISA. Right. And then once they pull that lead out of the bank, they put it into their account. That's the shark. That's the, that's like taken into their account. Right. Um, so for them, what they have to do is manage stage. That's it. Right. Manage stage, remove the collaborators. And now that lead is theirs. Yeah. They're not, they're barely paying attention to tags. Barely. Yeah. It's, it gets complicated. If they're going to look at that tag sheet, they're just going to be like, Whoa, no, thank you. Well, I think that's, I mean, to me, that's the key point here, right? Like we could easily go into like how to set all this up and do the thing. And this tag means that, or if you name it that, or if it starts with an asterisk, it means yeah. something crazy. Um, but the reality of it is, is you have, you have, I mean, the title of the session is set it, but don't forget it. So it's like, you yep. set this, you keep an eye on it, that's but your right. the expectation on your agents is, sounds like it's very, generally very clear. They're not doing a whole lot of, how do you, um, can you speak a little bit to how do you train for that? Is some of it in writing? Are they in person? Do you screen share? Sure. Like, how do you it's, a, it's a little bit of both. And, and things modify and change as it, as it progresses, right? But so I, I teach them to just move through the lists, right? right? And so there's two ways to work your database. There's task oriented or list oriented. And if you're task oriented, you're gonna be using task section right? Or your calendar. And what I found with, with integrations with all these other companies, um, tasks, if you forget a day or you're out of town, all of a sudden now your task load is just huge, right? right. But if you, but if you use a list calling that B lead today versus tomorrow, that's going to be fine. Right? right. So I just say, okay, create very intelligent smart lists and then just work your smart lists, nice. right? All the way through and, and you should just clear out those lists, right? Yep. Um, and your right. A's need to be under priorities, right? And then it keep working your way down. And so if you do a good job of that, all you've got to manage is just stage. That's right. it. Right. I love that. So can you give us, somebody's asking for, what are your top five zaps? Just give a straight up top five. If you could only have five zaps, what are they? Uh, that's a really hard question. Um, <laughs> I would use, I think, Callingly. This system called Callingly is probably something that I would really, really uh, want to keep. And uh, for instance, Callingly, if nobody's familiar, will uh, when a, let's say a new lead hits the account, it'll call the agent. The agent picks up, and now Callingly calls the lead and and connects them basically, right? So your speed to lead is through the roof. It is really, really good. It's really, really fast. Um, and, uh, the agent doesn't have to like take the time to like, look up the number, dial it and, you know, get the courage to make the call. They just answer the phone. Right. And so what I love that they do is after the call is over, it's, I have a zap call callingly completed. And when a call is completed, right. I will, the agent has prompted to say, is this an appointment? Is this an A lead? Is this a nurture? Is this a pawn? Is this an agent? Is it a bad number? And they will, they will basically decide right there on that call nice. what to do. And if it's a hot lead, then I send it into follow up boss. This is a follow up boss webhook. I send it to that stage. Right. right. 
That's so that way the agent, if they're out and about showing properties and they get the call, they could just prompt it. They got the lead. It's already in their account and they don't have to worry about anything else. Right. And then later when they're sitting at a desk, they go through their smart list and that person is there. So they don't That's forget right. it. That's, That's awesome. Right. So number one, callingly, we'll consider that one zap, you know, yeah. even if it's technically not. What's, uh, what's another one? Um, you know, I would think uh, we uh, love on our team some of the, the celebrate good times stuff, right? So I think I, I think I would lump all that into one is like when you when something really positive happens, being able to share that as a team, right? Nice. So like a new appointment happens in Follow Boss, like what a great trigger that it offers. It just uh, Follow Boss offers this as a Zapier trigger, and so we push it into our, uh, you know, Slack channel, right, as a, you know, uh, into our good times channel. That's brilliant. Right? As like, congratulations, right? You, so all of these are all basically triggered from, right. um, just them updating call up. Yeah, through a stage or yeah. an appointment, right? That's so brilliant. yeah, that's- And uh, you use station too, that's very, uh, that's very impressive. Yeah, I love this app because I can just bounce it here. I can also turn off station for automations, by the way. I just turn off no notifications and now everybody's muted. Okay. So I can focus on my stuff. That's sweet. For those who don't know, station is, I guess for ease of conversation, it's basically a one platform where you can add in a whole bunch of different platforms. Like instead of having all these as tabs in the browser, you can view your Slack and, and uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, like just, most things. So anyway, let's not, we won't get lost in station. We could nerd out on that for a while, but yeah. that's cool. Yep. That's brilliant. Celebrate. Slack like to celebrate. All right. Number three. Um, let's see. If we're, you know, I, I love the alerts. Okay. So one thing is we get inundated with alerts and we can get, we can get a little bit, um, worn out by all the notifications, right? I, I call it, we get notification fatigue. And, and so text messages, alerts and all that stuff. So as a team leader or as even as an agent, I want to be able to like decipher between them and know which ones are the hand raisers, focus on the right ones, mute the rest, or be able to come back and see them, right? Email, I believe is like kind of dated in a lot of these notifications, right? Because I don't know about you, but our, our emails just in the last, what, 20 minutes, it's just starting to climb, right? Um, but so our, I use mail parser as a um, trigger, okay? So mail parser is an app, you know, we do pay for it, but it grabs emails and it will, we can just say that's first name, that's last name, that's the follow boss link, that's the, the alert itself. And I grab that, right? So let's say it's a lead alert. I grab that and now I'm gonna send it, I'm gonna do some formatting then I'm going to send it back to our team, right? So if it's in our pond, which is our dummy account, Alex, right? It goes to Slack, right? Just like uh, on our pond channel. Okay, so here's our pond alerts, right? So again, this is our communication hub, right? So when something happens in the pond, you know, Kurt, old lead just returned to remarketing. Boom, claim it. I can click that lead and I can jump into it and I can claim it. Wow. Right. Cool. Just on that lead alert. So I love those apps because I can grab those emails, you know, I mean, return to view listings after 301 days, after 563 days, you know, so many great, uh, you know, great alerts that, Hey, if I'm an agent, I can just be part of this one channel. Yeah. Remove all the other notifications and just focus on that. That's awesome. Yep. Not, to, I don't want to sidetrack this, but like, are your agents and maybe, I don't know, maybe they're watching, maybe you can't say, are they relatively tech savvy? Or are they just like, just it's when this tough, thing right? dings, answer the, you know, look at it. It's tough, right? Because it's like, you, you don't expect them to be, you want them to be so they can pick up on this stuff. Yeah. But I, it's up to me to be able to build something that doesn't require somebody who, who needs right. a PhD in tech. But then they may not be good salespeople if they're nerding out on all this that's stuff. Right. So that's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So that's cool. why like this channel is a great, you know, threshold for them to basically say, don't pay attention to anything else except what's right. in these channels. Don't be a Slack master when it says pound yeah. pond, yeah. <laughs> do something, click on the yeah. claim. If yeah, you can call them right away. Yeah. That's just awesome. claim it. And so it takes a little bit of training, but I think it's been simple for, 
uh, for the agents to pick up, right? I almost think it's too much though, is the notifications, you gotta teach them how to, how to, how to say no to the to yeah. notifications, right? right? Some channels, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, dig it. All right, what's, uh, that, was, that was three, I believe, what's, what's four? I like this. Lilac's limiting you to only five. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> um, I think the forms, that's probably my fourth, um, is, is uh, we, we use a system called Cognito Forms. It's free. This is why I picked it. I basically went through Zapier and said, who are the forms that work with Zapier? And I'm just going to use them. And um, we've got an under contract form like on our team, right? And so, and they, or like a new listing, or if they want to add somebody new to the system, we'll use this one as the example, right? And so let's say they're out and about and they want to add somebody quick to the database that they just met at a networking group. They could grab this link, they could bookmark it on their phone, right? And now this is the quick ad form, right? And so they could start to fill this out. You know, what's the criteria? Do you have a stage in mind? Right. Well, do you have any alerts that you want to have set up for this person? Right. Et cetera. You can, you can add this as a vendor or as an agent, right. You can add multiple people into this and Cognito forms is a little bit more robust because if it's a referral, like I can add certain things, like where did you get the referral from all that and Zapier grabs that, right. This is that zap. He grabs that uh, form right and kicks it out to wherever it needs to go so if they labeled it new lead right okay here's the new lead is it a database is it a referral or is it whatever if it's a database then right here's the stuff there's right. a new inquiry so it goes into follow boss gives it a you know a note based on what it says right and then if there's a an appointment then it, it filter for appointment then it just creates the appointment on the calendar it's awesome Right. So I think forms in general is a, is probably the next like favorite style app. Right. That makes I, sense. And, and internal to emphasize to people, internal forms. I've done that. I've never done it that yeah. complicated, but that's really, that's really, really cool. Yeah. It's like, I also have one for when agents join the team, right? So when they fill out the form to join the team, it puts their birthday on the calendar and puts it reoccurring. Nice right? It adds them to Trello, it puts them into BombBomb, adds them to Sizu. It actually sends them the contracts through, this is a free software um, that we have our contract templates in there, right? And now we have send the email to the vendors. You know, we, this is, this is a, probably the Zap that's got the most apps tied, tied to it. Um, so maybe that's another one or if it's added to that, but uh, you know, reminders and, 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 you know, that way the experience is like, Oh shoot, I forgot. I never want to have that statement. I forgot to do this. Yeah. Like that's what I'm trying to prevent. Yeah. No, that's brilliant. I love that. All right. You got one more. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's see. Anything. If any you were lost on an Island with the free Zapier account, what would be your fifth Zap? Yeah. Right. Um, let's see. I don't know, man. That's a really hard question. I love, I think I, I like, I mean, I think I like the, uh, um, the tags probably, probably the fifth way, right. Is being able to like, if I wanted to create a tag for like, this one is the seller tag, create a seller tag and it can go into Homebot. It can go into, you know, wherever you need it to go It can go into bomb bomb. You know, I think the tags one would be the fifth one as a lumped together favorite yeah. zap because you can oh, that do, makes sense. yeah, I mean, think of your audiences, right? Like, okay, the, the tags, I always, I learned early on having robust data about your database is the difference maker. You know, think about how many points of data Amazon knows about you, yeah. right? Facebook knows about you, right? And your tags are your way of knowing more about your people right? Are they dog owners? Are they married? Do they have kids? Do they like skiing? Do they like traveling? Right. And if you can start to build that robust data, then whenever I tag somebody kids, it can, I can have them go into a, a Google sheet. Right. Right. And now I could send them a mailer or I could send them a newsletter for specifically kids. And right. I can give them macaroni kids you right. know, article. Here's things to do during quarantine with your kids. And then it's hyper relevant to them. 
Yeah. That's you. So that's I have huge. a quick question, and then somebody else has a question that's related to that. So. Sure. Do you, do you like map this out? How do you make sure that you don't have like this tag that's pushing that, that creates another zap, that creates another zap, that creates another zap that just like explodes the whole thing? You, you just track it. I mean, you get, you get alert, you get uh, errors, right? Yeah. And the team has probably seen that because it's like, oh shoot, we have 30 leads that just came into the account. Right. And, and so you, you'll usually check it pretty quick. Um, but I, I think how you prevent that is having a, like a framework like our, hashtag leads framework, right? Right. Like this is like, this is the framework, um, you know? And so I know now that I always have a beginning. And then the reason why I use a hashtag on my tags is because it shows up at the top. Right. That's all, right. Yeah, Double hashtag that. shows up at the top. Yep. Um, I love that. So the question that came in is, is very relevant to that. It just says, do you find that with such a reliance on tech and zap to actually function properly that things sometimes don't work as expected and can derail? You kind of just answered it, but I think they're really yeah. more about like high level. Do you worry yeah. about it? You know, and I, and my, that's always going to be the argument against tech is, is reliability, right? And power goes out, what happens, you know, systems go down, servers go down, whatever. Well, are you, you're a human being. Do you think you're more reliable than a, than a system, than a tech? Do you feel like if you weren't around, if you got sick today, do you think you would still complete what you needed to complete, right? My argument is um, I, I, humans are humans, but I think tech is more reliable than a human on making sure it's consistent with volume, right? Yeah. We're talking volume, not well, small no, time a day. Yeah, right, there's no fail safe any way you look at it. And that's a great, that's a perfect example. And again, back to what we said at the beginning, it's ideally the blend, right? The blend of the person, the technology, the person knows what the, and I guess to be fair, if Zapier went down or went away, it's not like you guys could function. I mean, it's not like there, it's yeah. not like you just hired a bunch of robots to make calls and read off of a screen. You're right. just automating so they do what they do best. Yeah, that's right, right? And I don't have to, they don't need to ever log into HomeBot. They don't ever need to log into BombBot. Right. They don't ever right. need to log into all I think these that, things. That's the key, that's the trade off, right? They don't have to yeah. do that. So Megan, um, we want to welcome Megan to join us. She may have some additional questions for us or questions of her own. I always own. have lots of questions. Um, what do you say, go ahead. <laughs> so I think, one, I just want to circle back to your point, Jeff, because I think it's really important is everybody wants to know all the zaps. Yeah. But you didn't start out like that. You didn't just start out and go, okay, I'm going to make 50 zaps. Right? right. You started to think about very strategically, what are these things that I do in my business that I would, you know, I'd rather automate if I could. And then yeah. you slowly layer that in. So I just want to hammer home that point uh, yeah. that it doesn't just start one day and bam, you have all of this. Because really everybody should be asking the question today of what do I do all of the time that's super repetitive, potentially I have a lot of mistakes because I forget to do this thing right. that I wish I could automate, you know, and kind of start there. So, right. but uh, it is really valuable to hear like that top five, you know, I wrote those down. I'm going to send them to everybody as well, but I'd love to hear you use a lot of other systems and you've mentioned some like Cognito forms. Uh, home bot, if you wouldn't mind going through just some of those top yeah. know, other pieces of technology that you layer in. Yeah. So home bot, Sizu, um, Sizu, where we use Calendly. Calendly is a phenomenal tool. Uh, Callingly, right? That's the Callingly system. Cognito forms. Um, I'm literally just going through the apps here. Google, like, I know that's like easy, but if you aren't using Google for business, then there is so much power behind a $3 a month user. It's insane. Like it's crazy how powerful that system is. And I barely have tapped into the power of Google and they've got, so you start to use Google for your email stuff for sure. Um, mail parser .io, um, many chat, a uh, sign request, that's the name of the contract software that we're starting to use. Slack, slide broadcast, um, street text, Ylopo, uh, BombBomb, Trello, Thanks.io, CloudCMA. 
yeah, that gives you what I'll do too is when I put all of this together for everybody, I'll I'll say what these things do, like what you can use them for, so yeah. that you can look at that list and pull from it. Yeah, and I think I I really want to hit that point home too of, you know, get try to figure out what you want, like what's the what, and just put yourself in the shoes of your consumer or your client and go, what do you I what experience do I want them to have, and let's try to put that in place as the what. As soon as I get a listing, here's what I want to happen. As soon as I get a lead, here's what I want to happen. Don't worry about the tech. Don't worry about the systems and the tech. If you get clear on the what, when you pick your head up and you look at your chart, right? You look at what you want, this, the tech will kind of discover itself. Right. right, yeah, that's a great point. Can you reiterate, you said it before, but can you re really reiterate like what your agents need to log into? Like what do they actually use? Uh, just follow up boss and Slack. Right. That's it. That is it. And you listed so many other systems. So that's just so incredible uh, that it's so simple for them because you've done the work yeah. to make it simple for them, right? Because this wouldn't well, work. It would fall flat. If yeah. they had to do all these things. Well, and to their defense, though, right? Cause I, I also you have used them as my guinea pigs in a lot of ways to say, I only want you in here. So I have to make sure that it does force you to only be in here, right? So there's a lot of this tinkering that has to happen in order to make sure that is actually the case, right? And, and, and so I can have people learn from those failures and those mistakes the same way by showing these apps and by showing what we've got. Right. So I, I definitely give agents that have been with me a lot of credit because they've seen 30 leads hit the account. They've seen bad notifications come through. You know, they've seen the mistakes, but I go without that. It's not where it is today. You know, thanks. Right. Like I'd rather fail and learn from that failure than, than be so fearful around doing it all together. Of course. Yeah. Did you ever, like, if you look back, is there, some zap that you implemented early on where you go, wow, that just saved me so much time. Um, you know, it's hard to go back and think what that was, right? Because um, it's going to be a follow-up boss, probably seller type of a thing where, you know, let, net, letting your listing coordinator know when a, when a listing is ready for them to be talked to, right? Um, I think that one of like changing the stage to coming soon seller and then it fire off you know a checklist to the listing coordinator and a notification that was like wow that made me look like a rock star and now we don't need to be connected um and the seller is going to get an experience there too i think i think those were a lot of the birth of this too was the seller type experience for sure do you yeah. do anything in terms of post close with all this automation? Um, not really, no. Unfortunately, we, we have audiences. So we, I have a tag, you know, system for like, uh, you know, not met, SOI, VIP, and it'll automatically move them through that. So now they're in a different audience, Facebook audience. Um, and that's the extent of it. You know, when you, when you do have that 30,000 foot view, the problem, the downside to that is you're thinking big and you're thinking long term. And so you, what you're missing in the short term is a lot of the things that are that are crucial to the now. And and but I'm focused on the, that future goal so much so that things like that, as important as they are, they've slipped through my crack. Right. And I'd rather it I'd rather, you know, it's part of the plan. It'd be part of the, the framework. But um, I, I just go back to the agent's experience. I just want, that's my, that's my key one thing is the agent's experience if I can do anything, you know, really well. So what's on deck next? Like, what are you thinking through in your business um, that you want to automate, make easier, better? You know, it's, it's, I was talking with a colleague just before the call and what we talked about is like, man, if we can get into our one thing, if we can pull back the curtains and get into what we're really meant for on our team, we're leveling up. And, and I think when I level up, it's going to force the team to level up as well. 
right? And so I am wearing the hat of multiple members on the team, like between the tech and between all this stuff. So what's next is leverage. What's next is simplicity so that it's that it can run for an extended period of time without having to keep auditing it, right? Back and forth every single day kind of stuff, right? So that's a person that has the, um, you know, the, the thought to think through what's working, what's not working, ah, that's real, that's not real, that's good, that's bad, right? So the next step for us is leverage um, so that we can overall level up, you know, that's it right there. It's funny because it always, go, always goes back to the people. You can have as much tech as you want, but it's ultimately up to the people, their vision and the, you know, um, uh, their ability to see through the gray area and assess what's right, what's wrong. It always goes back to at least the, the one, you know, or two people that are key. Do you feel like there's, there's potentially somebody missing on your team or yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you need that. You, you kind of need that ops manager or them. I, I think it's a marketing person, right? Because just like to your point of after closing, just like to my point of marketing to families with kids, right? Is I feel like that's a high level marketing person who understands the tech to say, hey, we need to go get these pieces of data so that we can market to that group, right? Um, I think that's a mix between an automation operations person and really a marketing person. Op marketing is creative. This is technical. And um, I don't know. I think that's a, that's a nice role, right? Cause they kind of blend together in a lot of ways, you know, um, that's how I think the next role would be for sure. Yep. That totally makes sense. Um, I want to put out there to just the follow boss team has, now in, in beta and automations feature for anybody who's not done anything in terms of automations yet and is not ready for you know using Zapier. Uh, and it will be a sort of light version where you can change the you know stage or add a tag and you'll be able to fire off an action plan. And I think that will be really, really great for folks that have not tried anything quite yet um, and then want to build upon that certainly with you know Yep. some of the stuff you've talked about, Jeff, notifications. And I yep. really love the celebrations that you, you're you doing with Slack. Uh, I haven't heard that before. And that's that's a pretty cool thing. Yeah, that's fun, right? And I think it keeps it fresh. It keeps it, everybody, even just as simple as an appointment. I say, if you're setting up showings, just throw it in as an appointment, right? You might think it's rudimentary and it's, oh, it's just a showing, but it's kind of fun, right? So yeah, I enjoy that piece too. That's but, such a good yeah. idea though. I, I want to lean into that too, Megan. Like I think, you know, the people, a lot of people aren't always all about kind of tooting their own horn and they're all, and then you kind of up the bar where you're like, well, it's just an appointment. I, I didn't get a listing yet. And it's like, yeah, but it's still a win. And so I think people always kind of linger there and then the phone rings and they never do it. So the idea of automating it as a celebration is just it's really yeah. smart. Yeah. It's fun too, right? And yeah, the automations that Follow Boss has come in is like, it's gonna basically take away five or six, seven zaps and make it all in house. So now I don't have to depend on Zapier servers to be functional to work, right? So that's gonna be great. That's gonna be huge. Yeah, that's really key. Thanks for, uh, that's a that's a pro super secret tip for the people that are on. That's Megan uh, dropping the secrets. Yeah, it's, um, and we'll be building up on it too, so. You know, there's definitely always going to be room for Zapier, right? And the integrations uh, piece. And so that's why I think it's really valuable to get that list of, you know, different uh, technologies that you use now, Jeff, because, you know, hopefully the goal here is the takeaway for everyone is you're not going to look at this list when we send it out and go, okay, I need to implement all these things. No, no, no. You're going to go back and think about your business again strategically and think, okay, what are we doing all yeah. of the time <laughs> that we'd like to automate, right? So, but it might also trigger some new ideas so you can be yeah. thinking ahead See, as well. I, I mean, just, I can speak to that because I love this stuff too. And that makes my head hurt. I mean, it's a lot of stuff, but you didn't sit down in an afternoon and do it either. No. So 
Mm -hmm. I think it's fair for people to understand that their heads don't have to explode yet. They can try one of these for a week yeah, and maybe not even bring the team in on it. Just try it for them and see how that goes and then that's maybe true. roll it out if that's the thing. So Megan, I think we do have some questions too, if you want to yeah. grab those or I can grab Yeah. So the, the automations, when does that go live? That's, that's in beta right now. So it's, it's live. Um, we can turn it on uh, and you can beta test it, but it is in beta. So that's great. And I think the other one is realistically, you only need a few zaps. I think that's true. It, it just really depends on your business, you know, where you're at in this process. Yeah. And this is about multiple things, but you know, one consistency I think is key and can be really, really hard when, you know, as your business grows to actually scale and be consistent in what you're doing. Right. And the other is, you know, certainly saving time, you know, thinking kind of like of your big goals, as Jeff was mentioning, like, what do you want your life to look like in five years? Well, like I think you're taking on all these things. Well, I think that is the key piece also is like, what's the why, you know, and if, if it's like, nah, you know, I just want to sell a bunch of real estate and retire in 20 years, you may not need to do all this stuff. Right. But for me, it's like, I wanted something stable and sustainable without me being there to do it. So this fits into my why, right? That's key. And I will say after talking to so many team leaders, so many agents, Jeff definitely, you know, the bar is up here in terms of like his automation. He's always had a lot going on. So I want that message to come through you know, this is a lot of this stuff may feel very aspirational right now. That's okay. Like you're supposed to just pull pieces from it. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. So I will call you Brad and <laughs> oh yeah. So Google Sheets is amazing. Do you use Google Sheets at all, Jeff? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's just the catch all, right? it's a guaranteed place to keep data. Um, so I, 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 I grab it there and I just let it sit there, you know, audiences to your robust data. Yep. For sure. For sure. Awesome. Well, I think this has been super useful. Um, I don't know if you have any other questions, Lee, but I just want to say I will be putting together a resource from this. I'll send a follow-up email with the recording. Uh, people miss a lot of, these sessions, uh, you know, there's a lot to kind of digest. So we'll send the recording, some quick tips from there. And then in the next couple of weeks, I'll also have a one pager with, with some of these resources as well. Yeah. And you're welcome to reach out to me. I'm open to opening the playbook and showing you and giving you some demonstrations that way too. Yeah, that's yeah. super cool. So I think especially, you know, if you really are, you know, somebody who really wants to go deeper on this, or you really have no idea where to start maybe uh maybe that's another good time to consult on uh you know should i even do this or what would you do this or what would you do first or i'm trying to get to this what do you recommend yeah so for yeah. sure that's super cool and, and and jeff's contact info is up there um and I'm also sure you can yeah. find him on facebook oh yeah, yeah. so so hard to find i know yeah, you could test that as automation. So don't don't go screwing with his leads, but like, yeah, don't go put a lead in my account. Please. See what the experience is. <laughs> don't go to his website. Out. That's right. Uh, you guys are good. Cool. Thank you so much, Jeff. It was really great having you on, and Megan, uh, you know, awesome as always. And I know you'll get all the all the info out to people quickly. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. That was fun. Have a great all Thursday, right. everyone. Yep. You too. See you later. Take care.